your way. It really, it will. It, it can happen to any of us. Here's the situation. You have your health insurance. You make your monthly payments. Then you get sick. Now you need your insurance. You need treatment. But instead of going to bat for you, your insurance company, they're busy looking for some loophole so they can drop you from their coverage so they don't have to pay. Unfair is an understatement here, but in most states it's completely legal. And it is happening every day. Now, Congress is trying to put a stop to this. This week, they've been hearing from insurance executives, but they've also heard testimony from people who say their lives have been really torn apart uh, by situations like this. Listen to this woman as she describes uh, this nightmare. Diagnosed with cancer, then dumped by her insurance company just days before she's going to have life-saving surgery. I got a letter. Cancel me. Cancel my insurance for sending it to the first day that they had covered me. Can you imagine having to walk around with cancer growing in your body with no insurance? It's the most terrible thing in the world to not have anybody to turn to, not have anywhere to go. Her breaks to hear her. She's not the only victim. I want to bring in our guest now. Uh, we start with LA Times reporter Lisa Garian. Uh, she's done extensive research on this. Lisa, thanks for being with us. And also joining us, Jennifer Whitney Horton. She's one of the many people who also had their policies drop. We'll hear from Jennifer in just a second. But let's start with Lisa. Lisa, explain this to us. How's an insurance company going to drop somebody just because they're seriously ill and really in their time of need when they need insurance coverage the most? Well, the insurance companies say that this is something that, um, unfortunately, um, they need to do to protect themselves and their other members against fraud. Um, and certainly nobody is saying that insurance companies shouldn't be able to protect themselves against fraud. But what uh, concerns a lot of people, and now Congress or some members of Congress, is that uh, after people have been paying premiums for um, quite some time um, and get sick, they um, then will look back at their application and with a fine tooth comb and look for anything they can use to rescind them on. Um, in the woman that you just heard from, the, the woman with aggressive breast cancer, they looked back at her application after she was diagnosed with breast cancer and found that she had failed to disclose a visit to a dermatologist for acne, and that was the basis for the rescission. Okay, when insurance executives hear this, hear the details of her case, do they come with a maya culpa, we're sorry, this won't happen again, we'll fix this? Or do they stick to their guns and say, yeah, th that's a reason to drop somebody? Which sounds to me, and I'm sure our viewers, that's ridiculous. What's an, what well, does a, a trip to the doctor for acne have to do with aggressive <laughs> breast cancer? But Lisa, go ahead. Well, in fact, they, they, they do say that, yes, this happens, and we're sorry it has to happen. Um, and in fact, uh, the other day at the uh, House subcommittee hearing on this very subject, uh, Congressman Stupak from Michigan put it to three insurance company executives and he said, um, will you commit right now to only rescinding people who commit intentional fraud? And all three of them said uh, no, that they, they could not, um, that, that it was necessary to root people out like this. Um, uh, root her out. To, that's, mm -hmm. that's unconscionable. And I just, mm -hmm. oh, uh, okay, let, let's hear the story uh, of Jennifer Whitney Horton. Jennifer's with us now. Jennifer, tell your story. Your insurance was dropped. Why? Basically, I um, had applied for insurance after I had transitioned from a job where I was on a group, pl group plan and I needed um, to be on an individual plan. And um, the first time I went to a doctor, they sent me a letter saying that they wanted to go through all of my medical records. Mm -hmm. And I consented having nothing to hide. And then when they went through my medical records, they found a scribble um, on some notes that a doctor had written in my chart and never just talked to me about, and they used that as the basis to rescind my insurance. And the whole thing took approximately six months, and I had, you know, I sent a letter of appeal along with two doctor's letters afterwards, and it meant nothing to them. They continued to rescind my policy, and that's when I got involved with this class action lawsuit okay. against Blue Cross. Now, did you have a serious condition that, you, they, that maybe they were trying not to pay, no, or you were I, just I trying had, to get insurance? I had disclosed that I had hypothyroidism, which is a really common condition. It just means underactive yeah. thyroid. And, um, you know, I had <clears throat> they had suspected that I had this other condition called polycystic ovaries because of what this woman, had, my doctor, had written in her notes. But it was something that she had never discussed with me, and and the letter of rescission was the first time I had ever heard of the condition. Okay, do you have insurance now? I mean, 
I do only because my husband, I got married and my husband uh, has a group health plan, so I'm on his insurance, but I can never get individual insurance again because of what Blue Cross has done.